A and P by John Updike. I think this uh, is a the perfect way to kick off this class because this is just a sort of a fun, goofy, language oriented uh, little story that, in in its own sort of simplicity, uh, raises many of the issues that uh, are big for you know America. The whole entire idea of you know being progressive versus being conservative, the idea of the youth versus the older propriety, our Puritan background juxtaposed against you know sort of the the new sort of liberalism. Uh, all of these types of major themes are introduced in this story uh, that was written in 1962. Uh, one of its major themes is the notion of morals and proper behavior. Uh, how do we conduct ourselves as people in the world? Uh, this story brings that up right from the very beginning uh, in the, the way that our main character talks uh, about girls, you know, which is something to consider. But then also uh, the way the girls in the story act and sort of the ultimate uh, thing that our main character Sammy does in the story in which he quits his job. Uh, you know, in some sort of uh, act of heroism uh, to try to impress these girls, though ultimately uh, it leads to nothing. So the story, you know, is sort of a case of teenage chivalry uh, in, in many ways. Uh, some of the big questions, and one thing that we're going to be uh, working on a lot with these uh, lectures and things that you want to think about uh, when you are reading these stories is that sometimes I'll be posing questions and it's just going to be uh, your job to sort of consider them on your own time and mull them over and debate them. Uh, one thing in literature is that you want to constantly be considering what things mean and not necessarily always take my word for everything. So one thing you want to consider uh, in regards to this story is what the girls are doing. They're in a grocery store, uh, somewhat scantily dressed. So you have to ask yourself, should the girls have been dressed like this. It's a large moral consideration and something that even though the story is 50 plus years old, uh, still holds true now. If you saw people, you know, teenage girls wandering around a grocery store today wearing swimsuits and no shoes, would that be an appropriate act or would it be something worthy of scorn? Another question to ask is, should our narrator have quit his job? Uh, obviously, this got him into some degree of trouble. It's not ever going to be a good thing to quit a job, uh, but should he have done it? You know, if he felt, uh, you know, a moral need to stand up for these girls, if he didn't like the way his manager was talking to them, uh, should he have done what he felt was ethically right and quit his job? Uh, another big question is you do have to ask, is Sammy a hero or is he an idiot? Uh, because he's kind of both. Uh, he uses a lot of slang when he talks, which is another interesting thing about this story, being uh, mid-20th century. It introduces a lot of interesting language, you know, such as uh, referring to uh, the one girl's uh, rear end as a can, uh, you know, and the story does use a lot of real speech. Uh, but then it also uh, has this sort of issue of whether he is engaged in a heroic act uh, by standing up for the girls or whether, you know, he just sort of set himself up to look like an idiot because, of course, uh, he goes out to the parking lot and they're already gone. Uh, so you do have to think about a lot of that sort of stuff and also consider Sammy, whether he is uh, chivalrous or maybe kind of bigoted in his own right. After all, uh, as a young man, he does sort of uh, say, uh, you know, you never know for sure how girls' minds work. Do you really think it's a mind in there or just a little buzz like a bee in a glass jar? Uh, which, of course, is questionable. The story also stands out for its era because he talks about A&P, which is a grocery store they don't have anymore. Uh, but he refers to it being uh, called the Great Alexandrov and Petrushki Tea Company in 1990, which, of course, is sort of ridiculous for us to hear about now. But, you know, you can see why in... Uh, such a year as 1962, the Cuban Missile Crisis, all that sort of stuff, why that would be a justified fear for somebody to have. Also, you have to ask whether the girls are given some sort of forgiveness uh, for their behavior and their attire, considering the fact that they weren't there just to hang out. They were there to get something in particular, herring snacks, uh, for uh, one of their mothers. 
uh, the fact that they were there on an errand for a mother, I think does give them a little bit more leeway, but it is sort of still sort of a problematic ethical terrain that they're working with. The story also does raise some uh, sort of feminist issues, such as the idea of women's liberation. Should they be allowed to dress as they please, and should they have this manager, this man, come up and chastise them for their behavior? Is that something that's fair? Uh, is it uh, you know, unduly conservative or uh, chauvinist or retrograde to tell uh, these women how they need to act when maybe they should have the right to act as they please. So these are all just questions that are in the air in regards to this story. Uh, there's not necessarily a correct answer to any of these questions. It's not like these girls were wrong or these girls were right or Sammy did the right thing or Sammy did the wrong thing. It's all just a matter of how you interpret the content of the story, the type of evidence that you can come up with and the type of argument that you can uh, develop to support your own viewpoint in regards to uh, the way that you should interpret it and the way that you should view these characters and their particular actions in regard to it. But ultimately, uh, this story is sort of an interesting little uh, mid-century time capsule for us to look at. At an instance of a young man uh, trying to do what he thought was right and maybe, uh, in fact, did it for no reason whatsoever. Uh, of course, there is that big question of what are we supposed to make of the ending of the story, where it just says uh, about Lengel, his face was dark gray and his back stiff as if he just had an injection of iron, and my stomach kind of fell as I felt how hard the world was going to be to me hereafter. So I think there's a lot of things that you can make of that ending, and this is a famous story, and there's been a lot written about it. You know, what exactly is going to be hard for him? Is it just the fact that he quit his job that's going to be hard for him? Yeah, you know, maybe in the short term, but maybe also the idea of doing a truly romantic act, the idea of doing something, uh, you know, on a whim. That if Sammy does continue to do things on a whim like this, man, his future is going to be uh, pretty hard for him. Uh, so these are all issues for you to consider about this story and to sort of mull and uh, just try to enjoy it.